Yeah, it's funny how it works out. I mean, the first time I did a video series on my own training was in Berlin Marathon 2022. So it started in July and ended at the Berlin Marathon in 2022. And the only reason why I did that various video series was because I really wanted to see professional athletes video series is leading into a event. So maybe an eight week or a 12 week uh, video series leading into a marathon or a 10K or a 5K or a half marathon. And what I learned when I tried to actually make that happen with professional athletes in and around Boulder where I was living at the time was that it was actually very difficult to get that commitment because it's pretty easy to get an athlete to commit to a one-off workout, but committing to a full series when they don't know their race plan leading in, they might have a tune-up race they're not sure about, when they don't know if their coach or their gym coach or their, you know, any, anyone else involved in their process is, uh, is okay with being on camera and being filmed. All these complexities made me realize it's actually a little bit difficult to convince an athlete to do it. So I thought I'd trial it and do it on myself just to learn how it works. How can you structure a video series? And there'd been other YouTubers that had done similar things before, but I just sort of wanted to try it and see how it worked. And um, the series that we did saw very high views. Uh, I was the fourth tracked most runner at Berlin Marathon that year. As a result, I'm sure Kipchoge was the first. I don't know who the second and third were. Um, and as a result of that, I also noticed that sponsors were quite interested in being involved in these series because they found a lot of value in them. Because in the other professional athletes videos, they already have their own sponsors, right? And so, as you can see, there's probably a situation there that's, that's financially beneficial to us as well, in that a lot of the videos we shoot for athletes, we actually lose a lot of money because the YouTube ads doesn't pay us anywhere near the cost of getting there and booking the travel and all that. So, um, these video series for me, I never really wanted to do, to be honest. Um, but I have been enjoying them the more time goes on and the more I do them and the more I learn more about how YouTube works and what people really enjoy seeing on YouTube. But for me as well, it's also about documenting my own progression to see how fast I can run over a marathon. And for many of you that have watched previous series, some of you might be watching obviously a video for the first time. I'm a 220 marathon runner and I've been kind of stuck on, I wouldn't even say 220, I would say like 222, 223, 224 for the last two and a half years, ever since running 220, two and a half years ago. I have run 221 since then, but I've run a slew of 222, 223, 224s. I think I've run, it's probably about eight or nine in the last two years. And this series that's gonna run through most of the year is going to basically showcase what I'm doing this year in order to try and get down to closer to. My coach, who I'll talk about in a minute, thinks 215, look, I'll be very happy to run under 220, obviously, but you know, let's see how far we can go. I'm taking an approach that makes a lot of sense to me. It's a very unique and different approach to normal. Um, you know, most marathon runners would be shooting for high mileage, lots of threshold work, lots of very long LT1 work, marathon effort work, a lot of volume. We're actually doing something quite different this year, and this video series is to explain what we're doing, sharing the journey, but also I want to use it as a platform to share updates about Sweat Elite. Sweat Elite Coaching Academy, what's going on, and uh, also some behind the scenes of some of the stuff that I film when I'm on the road, because there's so many interesting insights that I think I wanna share with the YouTube world. We also share on podcasts as well, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, there's so many things I think people can find value in, and whether they apply it to themselves or they just find it interesting and something to talk about, to me, they're both a win. So, welcome back to another series. Uh, this isn't called the Sub 220 series, it's called the Fast Marathon Series because I'm trying to run a fast marathon. And how much faster that is, at this point I don't know, and no one knows. But let's dive into the details. So for those that aren't familiar with my background, many would if they've been listening to the podcast, some might if they've just sort of followed on Strava, or obviously some friends following that might. I was actually a relatively serious middle distance runner when I was 17 to 25. I came fifth in the Australian National Champs twice over 800 meters. Uh, I was 148 guy, I ran 148 many times, 149 many times, I never broke through past 148. And at the time that was about, a, I think it was about 1.2 seconds, I think the qualifier was 147.1 off qualifying for the Olympic Games. That qualifying time now is a lot faster um, due to a whole slew of reasons and the way World Athletics are working, but um, I guess I was somewhat close to making that team. I wouldn't say I was super close. Uh, I took a few years off after that and worked a full-time job, uh, a corporate job, a couple actually, and then I decided to try my luck at a startup, which actually wasn't my first startup. 
Uh, it was about my fifth startup, actually, because I tried to start a few companies when I was running and through the corporate jobs, which all failed. Um, one, one did okay, but I would still call it not an overly big success. But Sweat Elite is, um, is you know, it's been around seven years now. So it's, it's, it's doing okay. We still have the very typical startup challenges. It still feels very scrappy on the, on the inside. Even though on the outside, it might look like we're pumping out content constantly, which obviously we are. But I want to talk all about that too. But back to my own running journey before we talk more about the other stuff. Um, I got into marathons when I was 30. I think it might have been just before I turned 30. It was, I think it was uh, uh, a couple of months before I turned 30. And in my first marathon, I ran 259.36. I was challenged by a couple of friends to try and break three hours. Uh, I was actually a pacer at that race for the three hour group, which obviously is a bit risky given I'd never run a marathon. But the way I figured in that race, it was like, if I get to 30K, 35K at 259 pace, that's great. But I managed to finish and it was really hard. Um, so that was in, that was at the end of 2016, I believe. Uh, I never get this date right. I have to go back and actually have a look, but it was around tw- end of 2016 or 2017. And then from there, I caught the bug. I caught the marathon bug. I realized, hey, I want to see if I can get down to 245. Um, and so I trained for a year and ran 243. Uh, had a lot of muscle cramping in both of those two races, the first one and the second one, especially the 243 one. And so I was sort of stuck with this problem thinking I can run faster than that. I think I can run 239, but I only ran 243 because I, I cramped up at the end very badly. Um, I think that's all on Strava too still, uh, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, shortly after that, uh, I think about six months after that, I ran 235 in Berlin in 2019. And then at the end of 2019, I ran 227 at the Valencia Marathon. Uh, and that was a huge PB because what I actually set for myself at the start of 2019 was to try and break 230. So I, uh, in December, I ran 227, 40, 43, I think it was, or 46. COVID struck, uh, but just before COVID struck and not long after the Valencia Marathon uh, in 2019, uh, in March 2020, I ran 224 at the Lake Biwa Marathon. And that, to this date, is probably one of my best runs, despite not being one of my quickest runs. And I say that because I paced it very well. I only cramped a very little bit at the end. It was only really minor cramping. Um, and for those wondering why I'm bringing up the cramping, uh, if you've watched previous series, series as you would know, but uh, I haven't gotten through a marathon without muscle cramping. So part of this series, I guess, for this year is gonna be talking about how I try and figure that out too, because we have plans for that. Um, COVID struck, obviously nothing happened for a while. Training wise, I got sort of went to Australia, got stuck there for a while. And then I came back and ran 220 at Indianapolis Marathon in 2021 in November. And around that time, I really started to think, wow, like how much faster can I run? I never imagined running these times, even a few years ago. I shared on a podcast, I think in 2018, that I'll never break 230. I thought that's where my ceiling was. Um, A couple of friends have shared that with me over the last couple of years. I don't actually remember saying that, but I did (laughs) publicly. Um, and so now we're at 2.20.46, and since then, two and a half years ago and today, I've run, I think it's nine, 2.21s to 2.24s, uh, and, and I've DNF'd a couple as well, um, uh, mostly because I think I just approached the race in a poor mental state in a sense of, I'm going for the time, and if I don't get on the time, I'm quitting, and I'm not proud of that at all. Um, so this year's about, you know, course correcting that mentality as well. And working through all these things in order to share what I believe goes into training for and racing your best marathon. Now, there's the whole principle of what works for me might not work for everyone. I mean, look, this series is sponsored by Precision Fuel and Hydration. Where's the drink bottle I have? Somewhere around here. I've lost it. And, uh, and Saw Running. And these two brands, while I love them and I work with them. Oh, the bottle's just behind the camera. Just a second. I can see it. Precision Fuel and Hydration and Saw, the two main sponsors of this channel. I love Precision Fuel and Hydration. They work really well for me and I'll explain through the series why, but who knows if it will work for you. If I've learned anything at all about running, it's that what works for someone doesn't always work for someone else. I've been on runs with people that are absolutely convinced that other brands of gels are the only thing that works for them. And you know, part of me thinks, well, have you tried other stuff? You know, who knows? But I'm going to share what works for me. I hope that people can find value in it this year. Um, I don't necessarily say you should copy everything that I'm doing or copy every brand that I talk about. Absolutely not. You guys already know all that. Um, But I do want to say a huge shout out to Saw Running and Precision Fuel and Hydration for sponsoring this series. Saw jacket on now. 
You'll see a lot of that gear through this series, just a warning. Um, I won't pump these things too hard, but uh, I do have to show a huge uh, appreciation for the sponsors because people that don't do videography, they don't realize it's actually very hard to monetize these things. And you might ask the word monetize. Well, if you want it to make, if you want it to be a full-time job, you know, you have to, you have to cover costs. I mean, the camera that's shooting this right now is, is not, it's not cheap. It's $1,200 plus a lens that's about $2,000. Like that's, that's a full month salary for a lot of people. Um, you know, the, the equipment that I use for audio, the microphone I've got right now is $480, you know? So the MacBook I had to buy the other day because my other MacBook died while I was trying to edit a video because my RAM completely shut down. That was $1,400, like these things cost. And so the sponsors cover these costs and you know, if there's a little bit of spare left over for us for, for our time putting in into, this, into making these videos, then, then that's a bonus. But huge thank you to those. We have two primary sponsors of the channel as well of this particular series, sorry. Garmin, I've been using the 965 for a long time. I'll share plenty more about Garmin and a new product that Garmin have out uh, as of just a couple of weeks ago that I really like. I'll share more about that soon. And HVMN, who are the Ketone IQ company that produced Keyshawn IQ that I talk about all the time. I love their product. I love their team. I'll share much more about them very soon. They're going to drop in, in and out of this series too. So uh, stay tuned for that. So last year was a really interesting year for me because I experimented with a few things. I experimented with going higher mileage. That didn't really seem to move the needle for me that much. Uh, and by the way, in Indianapolis Marathon, when I ran 220 in November 2021, I averaged around about 108 kilometers a week on, in the 12 weeks leading in, which is about 68 miles. That's very low for 220. Um, there are people that have done quicker for, with lower mileage, but usually running 220 or thereabouts requires a little bit higher mileage than that. So I went for high mileage. I didn't run any quicker. I never really was able to do strength work very well because I was traveling nonstop. And people are often asking, why aren't you doing gym? Well. I ask you to try to do a trip where you're bouncing all around the world with different gym rules and different day passes and different gym equipment. And not to mention the fact that your habits and routines are very thrown out of order when you're traveling. I mean, people that have done long-term travel listening to this will know that. Um, it's a bit of an excuse I'm using. It's a bit of a lame one, but it's very hard to get to the gym when you're traveling. You don't have a membership anywhere. Some gyms offer day passes, some don't, blah, 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 blah. I've now started because I've now moved to Chicago. Welcome to my home. And I'm going to be doing a lot more of that and sharing that on this channel as well on this series moving forward. Well, I haven't properly started yet, but at least this is my second session. And I hope this year to be able to be more consistent with strength work. And I guess the main reason why I haven't been over the last few years, and this is probably a poor excuse, is because when you travel, your routines and your habits are thrown out, right? And it's actually pretty difficult to, to even set a run schedule sometimes, but I've gotten used to that. But running is one thing, because you can just run anywhere, but gym, you need a gym. And so when I'm traveling around, I have to deal with opening hours, closing hours, not to mention membership fees being difficult with day passes. But anyway, that's all an excuse. But I'm starting to use this app that uh, Joe Skipper, professional triathlete, Ironman triathlete, uh, massive fan of his podcast, actually. Uh, he started Valor, and I'm using that to do strength training for now. Um, trying it out, he's, you know, um, luckily giving me a free trial, allowed me to use it. I'll report back in future episodes about sort of how I'm going with it, but it looks really, really good. Um, you can sort of set, uh, you can decide if you want to do swimming, uh, running or cycling. I'm doing the intermediate gym runs, run program. I'm going to best resume now. And uh, I'll share more in future episodes about what specifically it entails. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good resource, especially for people like me that um, are going to have a hard time joining a PT at a certain hour because my schedule's all over the place with filming. But uh, excited to finally start strength training and uh, looking forward to reporting back on the uh, on the benefits that I find. And of course, that's not going to be the short term, it'll be over the long term. But uh, now for my second gym set. But last year, I didn't do any gym. I tried raising my mileage a few times. I also tried doing five marathons in 10 weeks. And in that time, I ran some pretty good marathons, actually. I ran 224, I ran 222, I ran 222. I DNF'd two, one due to muscle cramping being very bad and another one because I was just generally completely burnt out and fatigued. Um, I've shared that on my podcast already, but um, yeah. So last year I ran four, three, I ran eight marathons last year and I ran 221. This is the first half of the year, so I'm going over them a little bit here. 221, 223 in a training run. London I DNF'd, my asthma flared right up. <laughs> then I ran Berlin in 224. Then I ran Chicago and DNF'd, 
Then I ran Indianapolis in 2.22 at about 90% effort, which was probably my best run last year. And then I ran Fukuoka in 2.22 and was on pace for 2.19 until very late and then cramped up. And then in a final race, it was an ASICS race that I ran with Yuki Kawuchi. Um, I ran, two, I, I DNF'd. I dropped out at 25K. Um, I was just, the Ekaden series that I was shooting in Japan just uh, was very tiring. And it was right around the time of Ekaden. And I just wasn't sleeping very well because I was doing a lot of work, blah, blah, blah. So that was last year. This year, I've joined a new coach who's actually joined us at the Sweat Elite Coaching Academy. His name's Max Frankel. He is... Not yet a very well-known coach, but I can tell you now, according to my own instincts and my own conversations with him over three years, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable people I know in the running world. He's young, uh, he's just turned 25, but I trust everything that he talks about with training. And this year we are actually going back to basically training like a middle distance runner all the way through until July. So at the moment we're doing very short, sharp work. The mileage is very, very low. We're doing very high intensity sprint work. We're doing very high intensity VO2 max work. We're doing threshold work, but we're not doing any long runs really. And we're not even doing that much mileage. My mileage at the moment is about 50 to 60 miles a week at absolute most, some, some weeks have been less. And in the hope that by June, July, I'm able to get down to times such as, this is the hope, uh, times such as about 410 to 412 in the mile, about 14 to 14, 15 in the 5K, 29, 20 to 29, 40 in the 10K, half marathon, ideally after that, if we can find a good one in about 105 low, 104 high. And I think that will set me up to go X, 215, 216, 217, 218, somewhere in there. Max believes 215 is possible. Do I believe it's possible? You know, I've always thought to myself, I guess ever since 220, in November last, in November 2021, I did think to myself that I think my ceiling might be about there. But honestly, over the last couple of years, I've lost a little bit of confidence in that just because I've been so stuck on six, seven, eight minutes slower than 215. But with that said, I'm having a little bit more confidence now that I can do that. And I also think so much of this is in the mind. That's not gonna make a lot of sense right now, what I just said, but I think through the series, you'll learn more and more about what I mean. I'm more referring to stress, I'm more referring to belief, and I'm referring to analyzing data, overanalyzing data, which is a massive problem for so many people. And uh, a lot of the people that I coach have a hard time with this, analyzing data and not knowing when to not look at the watch and when to know just to race. So we'll talk a lot about that. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's what's going on this year. My next marathon is almost certainly going to be Chicago Marathon. Uh, I haven't locked it in yet, but I'm pretty sure. And then after that, I probably wanna do one or two more marathons after that, because I still quite like the idea of doing a few marathons back to back. I don't think five is a good idea, but I think two or three is a good idea. Uh, and I've spoken about this at length in previous videos and on podcasts that I have a hard time with the idea of putting all this effort, four months, just because I'm so competitive and serious about these things, four months of training and just having one day to be ready to run a good time when that day could be really warm, really humid, you know, you could be sick, whatever. I like to spread my bets a little bit, pick two or three races, and hopefully one works out so that you can achieve the time that you want to achieve. So we'll talk all about that. But this series is going through the full year of me doing the speed work, trying to tackle those milestones along the way, I'll also share plenty of behind the scenes about the filming that I'm doing. That'll be a good, a lot of fun just to integrate the whole, how does this work? How do I train for a marathon? How do I do this training while working? And many of you, I mean, I know there's people out there watching right now that work more than me that run faster than me. So this is not a flex. It's just a, this is how sweat leaders run, I, base, I guess. Um, but back to the point, we're gonna share all of that. We're gonna share through the summer where I hopefully can break 14, 15 and 29, 40 for, for five and 10 and then go after this marathon time. And uh, yeah, we're gonna share it all. We're gonna share the ups, the downs, there'll be difficult moments, there'll be annoying moments, there'll be frustrations, there'll be missed flights, there'll be you know all sorts of stuff. But um, I'm looking forward to sharing it all. I appreciate everyone tuning in. And I guess before I switch off the camera for this intro, uh, I'd just like to share a huge update to Sweat Elite. Sweat Elite this year is going through a big growth curve. We're really trying to double down on everything that we're doing. We have opportunities at the moment with new staff members joining the team. 
We've recently assigned a new CEO. I was never actually wanting to be the CEO of Sweat Elite. I always wanted to just be doing the content because that's what's most interesting to me. And I wanted to coach athletes because that's what I enjoy doing. And I think that's what I have a skill set for. So welcome to the Sweat Elite team, Ronnie, who's just recently joined last week. He will be running, running the entire company while I have my focus on filming. And for example, four hours after I'm filming this, I'm flying to Boulder and I'm doing a week of filming with six of the best athletes really in the world uh, in triathlon and running. And we'll, you'll learn more about who they are very soon. I, I've already posted on my Strava who they are, but um, by the time this video comes out, uh, you, you probably already know. So there's plenty going on. We're gonna share it all. This is basically kind of like a behind the scenes of Sweat Elite and also my own training journey leading up to running, hopefully a 215 to a 218 marathon at the end of the year. Is it gonna work? Am I gonna run 215, 218? I don't know. Um, do I have to believe that I can in order to do it? Yes. Yes. So I'm gonna believe that I can. Um, I always did believe last year and the year before that I think I can run 217. I thought at one point, especially before Osaka Marathon, when I ran 221, I thought I could run 216. That was based off a few workouts leading in that I just did really well. And I was very wrong. I ran 221. So this year, let's see where we end up. I appreciate you all, you guys tuning in. There'll be plenty on this series. They'll be sharing different products, different reviews of different things. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing the strength work with you guys. It's coming very soon. And uh, I guess the final thing that I'll say is uh, on the growth of Sweat Elite. We are now just launching a whole new thing on our website, a whole new ecosystem for people to join us as a member of Sweat Elite. It's actually called joining us as a shareholder. And I'll explain what that is. As a shareholder now, you can join us and it costs $99 a year only. Let's face it, that's half a pair of shoes. It's only a few dinners out at a restaurant. Or it's 10 bucks a week, which is only a lunch every week. Uh, 10 bucks a month, sorry. It's 10 bucks a month. I actually got that wrong. It's 10 dollars a month. So it's just, it's a, it's a lunch. <laughs> that wasn't a very good pitch, was it? 10 dollars a month. So it's actually only 10 dollars. It's a lunch every month. And what you will get for joining that is you will get um, access to all of the articles on the Sweat Elite website, which is over 450 articles we've written over six years, all about training of professional athletes. We've interviewed people, we've researched people, we've done all sorts of things. We have spent probably 300 hours worth of research and, and travel to Kenya and doing all these things and writing, writing, writing all these different research documents. So you can access all of those. And you can also access a private podcast feed where my colleague Max and I talk all about the distance running world every single week. So we release a podcast on a private podcast series every single week about what's going on in the running world. We, talk, we answer questions like, should the 10,000 meters still stay an event on the track? We talk about doping, who, who we think might be what the implications are about doping, why people get away with it. We talk about all these sorts of things. We talk about marathon racing. We talk about what's happening in the news of running. We talk about the doping Olympics that are coming up, the, new, the whole new enhanced games, which is framed just all strangely. We talk about all these things. So if you wanna join us over there, I'd love you to. You can find the link in the description of this video to do so. No pressure, but I guess one thing that I just really bothered me over the last six years was when people would do things like this. They'd watch all of our videos for free. Obviously, we put them all out for free on YouTube. We put all the podcasts out for free. They'd sign up to our website subscription that was around up until a couple of months ago for $48 a year to access you know, some of the articles. And then they'd complain that we didn't update an article in like a couple of weeks. And I'd be like, well, we are producing you know, so much content for free that's really expensive for us. Like really expensive. Like Sweat Elite, I, it's really hard to make this company profit. It does, but it's really difficult to because if no one likes to pay for anything and they don't like ads, they're literally the two ways to make money for us. That's it. So if you don't like to pay to watch content and you're complaining about ads, I don't know how you think the content's going online. People have to be incentivized and paid to produce content. Like I've already, already went through the costs of these things that are just helping me today. It's over five grand. So, um, yeah, I hope that you can join us over there. I'd really appreciate it if you did. If you're not interested in any of those things, no problem. Stay tuned to this series and I hope you appreciate it, but just don't complain about the brand sponsorships. Um, so yeah, 
I would love for you to join the Shareholders Club. You can find the link down there. I'll put the link up in the top of this video as well. There's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff coming from there and we're hoping to, to start a Discord channel in the very, very near future so that people can actually talk to each other. We can get coaches interviews. We can get people sort of in a community online to talk about training, talk about racing, talk about everything. So that's coming hopefully soon too. We have a Discord channel for Sweat Elite Coaching Academy, which is our coaching company that's doing very, very well now. I'll talk about that in future episodes. This is a separate Discord. This is all for Sweat Elite members, but uh, anyway. Well, I'm gonna turn this camera off now because I've actually got a pack for Boulder for this trip. There's a lot of filming happening this week. But thanks for watching. I'm hope, I hope that you're excited about this, uh, this next video series that's coming up for this year. I certainly am interested in sharing all these things. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. There'll be a lot more training sessions. There'll be a lot more mental breakdowns. <laughs> just kidding. I do have the occasional one when there's just too much going on. And I'm just trying to figure out what time of day I'm going to sleep. Um, There'll be plenty of discussions with, got, with good coaches. There'll be plenty of insights into the gym I'm doing and all that jazz. Plenty of fueling stuff. We'll get the Precision Fuel and Hydration guys on to talk about fueling uh, and hydration and all that fun stuff. But uh, thanks for listening to the first episode, guys, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.